Hi again and welcome to today's video where I'll be showing you four PMU needle techniques, how and when to use them, and common mistakes I see that can ruin your work. First of all, what are your biggest issues with needle techniques? Answer in the comments below. Now let's do some latex practice. The first movement we're going to look at is the pendulum movement, where your needle stays at 90 degrees and swings from side to side. This movement should always be smooth and the pixels should spread out from the center outwards. I think this is the perfect movement for beginners because you can practice this with a pencil on paper and get those really smooth transitions. When transitioning, start your next stroke about halfway along the first stroke. This should blend seamlessly together. By doing this, you should always get perfectly blended brows. You're moving the needle in two different directions and making contact with the skin each time. This makes it a really easy way to implant pigment quickly. However, if you're not practicing this movement smoothly and seamlessly and leaving the skin with each swing, then you are going to get blocky results. The pendulum movement is great for brows. It gives a lovely powder brow. It can also be used on lips as well. And also you can see that when we wipe it, those pixels are all seamlessly blended. And so here is how not to do a pendulum movement. You can see that this isn't actually a pendulum. The needle is staying in the skin, moving back and forth. And when you move along the brow, it's moving in a block fashion and when you wipe it, those blocks are going to be visible. There's no swinging in and out of the skin, it's more of a scribbling motion. And when we wipe, that's exactly how it looks. So if you're getting these blocks in your brows, you're probably not swinging your needle enough like a pendulum. Think of it like a clock movement. Next we're going to move on to whip shading. This is a really common stroke in PMU. This is similar to a pendulum, although it's only making contact with the skin in one direction. So even though you can see the needle moving back and forth, it's only touching the skin in one of those directions. In this movement, I'm whipping towards myself, so the pixels will gradually spread out the closer towards me that the needle comes. This is another really great movement for seamlessly blending your powder brows. And now I'm changing to whipping away from myself. So the pixels are going to start gradually spreading out the further away from me that the needle goes. There is actually a difference with how these will look. I find that whipping away from myself actually deposits more pigment in the skin. You're gonna see this when we wipe it. If you're whip shading and you always get one brow that comes back with more pigment in, then maybe you need to change up your technique slightly. You can see now that when we wipe it, that there is actually more pigment deposited when I'm whipping away from myself. And here's a common mistake I see with whipping, scooping into the skin, going far too deep. And this happens a lot more with beginners. You need to be feather light on the surface of the skin. Whipping aggressively like this is gonna cause trauma and that's gonna to lead to poor results and even scarring. If you're a microblader and you're struggling with keeping your shape, getting good retention and getting crisp heel strokes, then I have a new course coming out, Boss Your Blading, so you can register your interest now for a great introductory offer. The link is in the description below. The third movement I'm going to show you is etching. This is a lining movement. You see this wherever you want crisp lines. So in eyeliner wings, um, outlining an eyeliner, also lip lining too. The needle doesn't leave the skin in this movement. It shuffles back and forward, just making a nice line. And this is why it manages to deposit quite a lot of pigment in the skin. This movement is great for crisp, clear lines, such as eyeliner or lips. You can also use it to outline brows, but if you're a beginner or you're not sure if you're a bit heavy handed, then etching like this 
can be a little bit too much and you can end up with really bold outlines to your brows. If you're not sure of that, then go back to the pendulum movement that we used earlier and just shuffle that along your outline and that's gonna give you a much dustier outline rather than this heavy, bold technique. The biggest problem I see with etching is people just going far too deep. You can see I've just got the very tip of my needle in the skin there. The final movement we're gonna talk about is the circles movement and this is great for packing in color. Now, not everyone you meet is going to be able to tolerate whip shading or even the pendulum movement on their brows. So if you've got someone with maybe more mature skin, certainly more fragile skin, if their skin is looking overworked, then you're going to have to pack the pigment in as quickly as possible in the fewest passes. So the circle movement, tight circles like this, I would normally use a bigger needle for this, then that's going to get real density of color quickly. I'm also a big fan of doing this for eyeliner and also for lips as well if I'm struggling to get the colour in. But eyeliner, I use this movement a lot. I've done all these movements with the same speed on the same machine and you can just see the difference in the density of colour, how much has been packed in by changing to a circle movement. Now this is not the technique to use if you want scattered pixels in brows. But if you're wanting to get colour in quickly, then this is a really, really great movement. The circles should overlap on all sides, so shuffle along with your circles and then when you transition, make sure that your next row of circles touches the first one as well, and that way you're going to get a really nice even colour. Keep the movement really tight and concentrated as well. So if you're struggling with brows or eyeliner and can't get your colour in, then try switching up to the circle technique. I get so many people asking me how to pack colour into eyeliner. Well, look at this demonstration and try this next time you're struggling. If you use a bigger needle so you don't blow out, this circle movement is going to really help you with your eyeliner colour. Practice makes perfect on all these strokes, but knowing when and how to use them can help you get better results. Now I've covered the techniques, but if you want to know which type of needle configuration to use in different situations, I have this great video for you here. I'd love you to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.